What up guys, today I will be checking out the behind the scenes of Color the Sheep, one of our first minigames we released on this channel and also one of the easiest. So the reason why I'm doing this and not any other minigame is because I want to start this series off with the easiest minigames and not with like my inception because that's just impossible to understand if you're never used any redstone this one is really easy the redstone isn't complicated at all but you could maybe learn something with it um, to make your own mini games and the next thing i would like to say is i already did um, a video like this it was actually my first commentary i ever did but it was three months ago i totally forgot about the series and someone yeah someone mentioned it on the on the video and i thought yeah why not pick that up again because everyone was really positive about it so um i'm going to stop talking right now and we'll get into the video so this is what it looks like without the blocks on top and as you can see there's not so much redstone to it and that's the reason why I ch i've chosen this mini game over any other mini game we made and that's because it's one of the easiest we created so after you watch this video there's a pretty high chance if you are a little experienced with redstone you can make a sort of color the sheep game yourself if you want to so let's get into the behind the scenes so i'm explaining everything in the right order so i'm going to start with what the minigame starts with so it's easy to follow along and yeah the first thing you do when you play this minigame is choose between single player or multiplayer and how did we do this well there's a lever here and the lever powers the redstone line under it and the redstone line under it powers these two torches and yeah if th if the torches are turned on they power um, this line and also this line and both lines power one of these torches and if the lines turn off one of uh, this torch will turn on the line will turn on and this repeater will activate and also this one and what it's basically doing is it's toggling two artist node latches and this is an artist node latch and this is also an artist node latch so an artist node latch is like the simplest uh, memory unit there is in Minecraft and what is it well it's something that can uh, either be off or on and we can turn it on or off with a single pulse and yeah this is doing exactly the same we can turn it off and we can turn it on again and when we choose between single and multiplayer we're basically um, deciding whether um, the two latches are turned on um, in one go or if one latch is turned on by one button and another latch is turned on by another button so at the moment it's turned on to single player and when we press the button if you follow the redstone over here the torch is going to turn off and this line of redstone is going to turn off because yeah, the torch is deactivated so this torch turns on both um, our snow latches are going to toggle so yeah that's single player multiplayer the torches are both activated now so the torch that turns off over here when we press the button isn't going to do anything to the line because yeah it's powered and the signal also um, goes to the repeater over here but the repeater only powers one of the two or snow latches and the other button controls the other one so yeah that's basically multiplayer and both our snow latches feed into an end gate and that's this line of redstone and if they are both act, um, toggled so both buttons have been pressed this line is going to turn off the torch is turning on and what you see over here is a pulse limiter which is going to send a pulse when um, the torch turns on and it's going to reset the, the latches so the repeater feeding into the latch and it's also going to start the timing circuit and the timing circuit is basically the delay there is um, and how long the game takes to play so um, another thing that is getting powered um, by the yeah the memory over here is the line of redstone over here so if the game starts this is going to turn off 
and when it turns off, the torch over here is turned on. So it's feeding into um, these two monostable circuits, but also over here. So we're first um, taking a look at the monostables. Um, these are um, two in an array, and one monostable circuit will power on when the redstone is um, turned on, and one will give a pulse when the redstone is turned off. So I'll demonstrate it. Turn on, this one flicks on and turn off, and the other one turns on. And the signal is going through a, a delay. And why is there a delay? Well, before the game starts, there is these um, two uh, little countdowns um, that first happen before the game starts, so you know when yeah, it's starting. And they need a little delay. Yeah, that's logical. They need some time to count down before yeah, the game can start. So there's two lines over here, one with an extreme long delay and one with just a four tick delay. So the extreme long delay is directly connected to the two uh, big squares um, on top. And that's actually um, the line of redstone I'm pointing at. So when it turns on, it will turn off the torch, turn off the line of redstone and turn on the two torches, which both power the, um, the piston, uh, four pistons. So now it's green and red is pulled back. And yeah, the signal is basically inverted. So red is always um, the inverted thing of green. So that's really easy. Then the next thing um, are the three bottom pistons that basically do like three, two, one, and that's this line of redstone. It goes into another monostable. It gives a two tick pulse. So each piston extends for about two ticks. And um, there's exactly one second in between each piston. And yeah, we accomplish that by using some complex wiring over here. Um, I, I think I even used uh, our snow latches to make it um, even more difficult, but yeah. It's just repeaters between every piston, so it's it's exactly one second between every piston. And that's the countdown. Let's quickly connect that back. Then we can go uh, further with this part. It's going up uh, with these redstone torches. And what you see over here is basically a supercharged T flip flop. So if you never heard of it, well, a T flip flop is basically converting a button into a lever. So if we press a button once, it's going to turn on. And if we press um, the button again, it's going to turn off. And I'll quickly show you. Um, now the block is over the redstone torch. If I break the redstone dust over here, it's going away from it. So the redstone behind it is getting empowered and the whole thing is starting, as you can hear. And if we reconnect it, yeah, it's doing nothing, but if we break it again, it will change the state again and the whole thing turns off. And I actually remove some blocks over here. Um, then the power from the torch underneath the block is um, directly connected to all the pistons. And the pistons basically block the sheep from spawning. So a sheep is just a little over one block in height. So they can't spawn when there is a block pulled over the pressure plate. And that's basically how we can control the spawning. Let's go on to the next thing. Um, the timer also um, feeds into um, this little <laughs> array of repeaters. and. After the game is finished, it's going to send a pulse. And yeah, it's also sending a pulse um, to the RS node ledge to reset the timer. But it's also sending a pulse in this, uh, in this array of yeah, repeaters. So why did I need this? Well, if the sheep um, fall down into the pit, they die because of the fall damage. And they drop one wall block exactly each time. So the wall blocks are yeah, quickly traveling through because of the ice and they are collected in one single uh, collection point and that's the piston head. So if these were wall blocks, they would get collected over there. And 
The repeaters um, I just showed you are basically there to give the last four blocks enough time to reach the collection point. So other than that, they have no use. Um, then the pulse feeds into another pulse limiter. I have no idea why I use these because it's already a pulse, so it's pretty pointless, but oh well. Um, these give uh, also a pulse and the second one turns on about mm, 16 ticks after the first one. So why that is needed, I will explain in a bit. It's also pretty funny because it's pointless as well. And yeah, the pulse just goes um, along this redstone line. And eventually it reaches the uh, conveyor belt where the collection point is. So uh, how this works is very easy. The, the pulse is going first going underneath here and it's basically powering the piston where the wall is collected on at the moment. So that piston is going to fire first. Then um, a piston needs one and a half tick to extend. So two ticks after it, it is extended, we can power the next piston and that's this piston and it's basically going to push the blocks onto the next piston. And this, is, this pattern, pattern is just going to repeat itself. So it's going to be extend, 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 extend. And the blocks are just like traveling in a staircase. And the whole thing is modular, so there's basically uh, in between every action two ticks. And as you can see, it's, it's, it's just the same thing repeated over and over, except for the top, because it's a little bit different over here. Um, we because we needed to get um, the wool blocks on top of this block without, yeah, there's, there, there's like wool all around it. So we just needed to retract this block for a second, pull the wool blocks on it and extend it again. So how did we do that? Very easy, I'll demonstrate it. If this is the, the first pulse, then this is happening. So the blocks are getting pushed onto it and then shortly after the second pulse arrives and then this happens. So as you can see, they are all lying on top of here and yeah, it works, but it's really inefficient and it's not really needed um, to make it that complicated. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. That's the how it works of Color the Sheep. If you enjoyed this video, uh, please leave a rating and I will see you in the next video.